Kendrick Lamar just destroyed Drake again. But let's talk about that pressure first because after Drake made push ups and Taylor made freestyles, a lot of people thought that Kendrick Lamar was done for. In fact, among the Drake fan community, it became a joke to say that Kendrick was running from Drake. I mean, I even saw a post talking about every diss track that Kendrick Lamar didn't respond to. The narrative was clear Kendrick Lamar was a ducker. Yet, when Euphoria dropped on Tuesday, all doubt was erased from Mr. Kendrick Lamar. The song was essentially kind of a reintroduction as to who you're really fucking with when you step on the mic. And I honestly feel like nobody on Camp OVO was ready to hear a response this soon. So imagine their surprise when Kendrick Lamar drops another one. Yeah, somebody's lying. I can see the vibes on X. Even he looking compromised. Let's kill the. Or maybe this isn't surprising because Kendrick Lamar did say on Euphoria that he liked back to back and that he would get back to that for the record. And honestly, I think a lot of people didn't really catch that bar. Uh, and as a result, we didn't realize that a second diss track was a possibility, but here we are. And where some people might hype up Euphoria more because it was the more direct diss, I feel like 16AM is the more damaging one. This is because, as you probably know, on Euphoria, everything that Kendrick said was something that someone had said beforehand, or at least for the most part, right? Right there. Oh, now, why don't you like Drake? I don't like anything about Drake. Mom, I, I don't like his voice. I don't, I don't like, I don't like what he talks about. I don't, I don't. Talk, Jeez, I be trying to I tell his face. I don't like the way he walks. Like nothing. I don't like, like, nothing. I don't like his haircut. <laughs> I might just let me shut up. <laughs> and honestly, some people saw this as a negative of the track, saying that Kendrick Lamar isn't creative and that there was nothing shocking on the diss and therefore that this wasn't good. But as a PSA to all hip hop fans out there, grading this tracks based on shock value is essentially just gossip. I'm not gonna lie. You want gossip, not a diss track. I get it. However, 16 AM in LA does provide a different angle, a fresh angle at that, mainly because Kendrick Lamar is questioning Drake and the crew behind them. With the first real damaging blow coming in at the two minute mark when Kendrick Lamar says, are you ready to play Have You Ever? All right, let's play. Have you ever thought that OVO was working for me? Have you ever thought that OVO was working for me? The reason why I think this works more than anything in Euphoria is because Drake has made it very clear. He does not trust people. He is a very paranoid man. No friends in the industry, no new friends. It's lonely at the top whatever whatever to me it's very clear that drake doesn't know who to trust and honestly this goes back to the story of adidon as well the whole adonis thing was kept under wraps but someone leaked it so who was it if you believe drake it was his mentor his longtime friend kanye west the guy he admired the guy that when he came up in the industry he was like his hero type thing he wanted to be kanye west however if you believe Pusha T's version of the story, it wasn't Kanye who leaked. It was someone closer to Drake. Because if you believe Pusha T's side of the story, none other than Noah Shabib, 40 from OVO, was the informant. And the two had been close since before Drake was famous for being a rapper. Shit, it might have been when he was fucking in Degrassi and whatever. But my point is, if there's somebody that Drake looks at as a friend, it's 40. And there's still the possibility that the informant was him, not Kanye, but 40. On top of that, as the last few weeks have made it evident, almost every friend that Drake has in the industry has turned against him. Like, bro, he's beefing with Rick Ross. If I told you in 2018 that Drake and Rick Ross were going to be beefing, you wouldn't believe me. But this is the hole where Drake finds himself in. And I bet he's feeling a whole lot of paranoia. Like he said in back to back, what is this, a 20v1? Drake feels alone, bro. And well, Kendrick knows that. Bully, I hate bullies. You must be a terrible person. Everyone inside your team is whispering that you deserve it. It doesn't just stop there. He goes on to say that everybody in OVO, whether Drake knows it or not, is saying that he deserves this. Anyway, this is what Kendrick Lamar has to say about it now, 10 years thing. later. Drake is getting his good back. And it's not looking pretty, honestly. And keep in mind, I'm only talking about one aspect of the diss track. 
The diss track gets deeper. Your circle should puzzle you. If you were street smart, then you would a cart that your entourage is only to hustle you. Look at the title, for example. Sit 16 in LA. Which also happens to be the date for Father's Day this year. The date for Tupac's birthday. And potentially another nod to OJ. Especially with the gloves on the cover art. As Nicole Brown's funeral was on June 16th. Oh, also, you know how the second Drake song that he aimed at Kendrick Lamar was called Taylor Made Freestyle? Well, this song is produced by Jack Antonoff, or in other words, it's Taylor Made. Heading back to the diss track, Kendrick Lamar ends the track by calling out Drake again, or more specifically, calling out Drake fans. The forced opinions is not convincing. Y'all need a new route. And honestly, Kendrick is speaking for us all. I think the more unbiased side of hip hop has been able to say Euphoria was a great track, but for whatever reason, Drake fans are having a little bit of trouble coming to that conclusion. Now I get it. I don't want to see my guy lose when they lose, right? When the Heat lost the other day, I was fucking, I, I was sad, but I still got to give props where it's due. What am I going to say? The Celtics weren't a good team. Like I, we all saw this, man. But yeah, if you've been on Twitter, Drake fans have been scrambling for anything, trying to convince themselves that Drake was the winner. Drake, on the other hand, has been making memes. By the way, the irony of trigger fingers turned to Twitter fingers is not lost on me, right? Because, you know, this is Drake, and he's been only posting memes ever since uh, Euphoria came out. But, you know, it is what it is, I guess. Actually, the more I think about it, Drake has been on that uh, meme machine since Kendrick Lamar dissed him initially and like that. But yeah, getting back to the diss track, the closing bar is my favorite. Before you figure that you're not alone, ask what Mike would do. Before you figure out that you're not alone, ask what Mike would do. Obviously, this goes back to the whole Michael Jackson Prince thing that has been an underlying theme of this whole like this battle. And with Drake believing himself to be Michael Jackson, he needs to take advice from the man and listen to You Are Not Alone. With Kendrick asking, what will Mike do? And honestly, if I wanted to be really cynical, I'd say this is also uh, alluding to the uh, um, underage sexual activities uh, allegation that Drake has against him. But that's not for me to say. But yeah, I think this Kendrick Lamar diss track really proves that Kendrick is up big right now. People doubted him, they put pressure on him, some even said he couldn't deliver, but here he is, delivering. And it's safe to say, Drake, you're on the clock, dog. We need that response. Anyways, uh, I'm sorry for this being late and also the audio being ass. I had this big microphone that was supposed to be like high quality, but the settings on it were like bad, so it didn't work. Uh, uh, there's also like protests going on on campus, so I was more focused on like the protests and stuff. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, shout out to Kendrick Lamar, man. Shout out to Drake. Shout out to Jay Cole. Shout out to Jay Dilla. Shout out to God. And shout out to me. Shout out to y'all. How about that? Uh, and yeah.